example, you should have Pepsi Cola to increase your testicular size and the androgen receptor content, and you should have Coca Cola to increase your serum testosterone concentrations. You know what I'm thinking? I know what you're thinking, right? Vigor Steve here. In this video, we're going to find out if Coca Cola is better for your serum testosterone concentrations compared to Pepsi Cola. Yes, that's actually been studied. Who would have known? Apparently, both Coca Cola and Pepsi Cola are able to increase serum testosterone concentrations as well as testicular volume. So maybe us bodybuilders, we don't need pulse cycle therapy at all. Maybe we don't need HCG monotherapy. Maybe we can rely on these carbonated beverages to keep our testicular function intact. Again, it's based on an animal study, so take it all with a grain of salt. Still, it's a very interesting study that a friend of mine recommended to me a couple days ago. So I figured, why not make a video about it? Before we do, please like the video, leave a comment for the algorithm, consider subscribing if you haven't already, and feel free to join the YouTube memberships or the Patreon page to help support this channel or leave a super like to show your appreciation. That's always highly appreciated. Let's get into it. The following study performed by Gong et al. in 2022, performed over July to September, titled Carbonated Beverages Affect Levels of Androgen Receptors and Testosterone Secretion in Mice. So they used mice as a subject sample and investigated if Coca-Cola versus Pepsi-Cola was able to raise serum testosterone concentrations and androgen receptor content of the testicles. Now, these Chinese scientists specifically mentioned that the consumption of carbonated beverages may lead to obesity, cardiovascular disease, and even type 2 diabetes. There's been a study performed on rats where they consumed carbonated beverages for over a year, showing increased body weight gain. They also suggest that carbonated beverages might decrease fertility parameters. In a previous study performed on female mice regarding the negative effects of Coca-Cola versus Pepsi-Cola over a duration of 25 days, it was shown that both of these carbonated beverages decreased ovarian mass, reduced ovarian cortex thickness, as well as affecting follicle development. Now, in this study, we're going to specifically look at male mice and see if Coca-Cola or Pepsi-Cola affect testicular development, the expression of androgen receptors, and also if they alter testosterone levels in serum. In this study, they had five groups, a control group, which received regular tap water. Group two received 50% Coca-Cola mixed with tap water. Group three received 100% Coca-Cola. Group four received 50% Pepsi-Cola with tap water. And group five received 100% Pepsi-Cola. Now, before we continue, let's start poking some holes into the study because the tap water in China, that's not for human consumption. I wouldn't even feed it to my pets. When I was in China, traveling through China for a whole month, I always made sure that my drinking water came from bottled water. So, at least they had a control group, so it had a control group with tap water and two of the cola groups received 50% tap water. Still, when you look at the results, the changes are clearly there. The experiments ran for 15 consecutive days. They took blood samples and collected the bilateral testes on day zero, so that's at the start of the experiment. On day five, day seven, day 10, and day 15, respectively. They assessed serum testosterone concentrations and serum epidermal growth factor concentrations using a mice enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay. ELISA kits and Western blood was performed to evaluate the expression of androgen receptor proteins in the testicles of the Pepsi-Cola and Coca-Cola treated groups, but not the control groups. Let's look at the results. The testicular weight of 100% Pepsi-Cola, 50% Coca-Cola, and 100% Coca-Cola significantly increased on day 15 compared to 50% Coca-Cola and the control groups. So these results show that a high dose of Pepsi-Cola or any dose of Coca-Cola will promote testicular growth and development. So if you have to choose between Coca-Cola and Pepsi-Cola, in this context, I would stick with 100% Pepsi-Cola because the testicular weight was a little bit higher than the Coca-Cola groups. Still, it is of note that any dose of Coca-Cola will grow your testicles, right? Maybe that's the best way during your post-cycle therapy or to sustain <laughs> testicular function while you're on cycle. You can see here that serum concentrations of all mice were enhanced after the Pepsi-Cola and Coca-Cola treatments. And serum testosterone concentrations were significantly higher in the 100% Pepsi-Cola group as well as the 100% Coca-Cola groups. When, when you look at the graphs, 
you see that 100% Coca-Cola narrowly beats 100% Pepsi-Cola in serum testosterone concentrations. So that's one point for Coca-Cola and the previous points goes to Pepsi-Cola regarding testicular growth. It is also of note that serum epidermal growth concentrations in the treated groups were significantly increased compared to the control groups on day 10 and 15. And the expression of androgen receptor messenger RNA in the mouse testes increased in all four treated groups as well. And when you look at the percentages, the increase on day 15 on 100% Coca-Cola is 67.25%, whereas in 100% Pepsi-Cola, that's 78 0.75%. Another point for 100% Pepsi-Cola. You get a lot more androgen receptors in your testicles when you drink Pepsi-Cola. Man, it's starting to turn into a commercial, right? Well, you should have Pepsi-Cola to increase your testicular size and the androgen receptor content, and you should have Coca-Cola to increase your serum testosterone concentrations. You know what I'm thinking? I know what you're thinking, right? We should have half a liter of Pepsi-Cola for its benefits in the testicles, and half a liter of Coca-Cola for its benefits on serum testosterone concentrations. Maybe we should have that every single day of the week so we could feel alpha as fuck. Now, don't get your hopes up because I specifically mentioned in the discussion that carbonated beverages have a harmful effect on the endocrine system as well as reproductive functions and overall fertility parameters in men. They link a study of 2,500 men which showed that sperm quality was significantly reduced by 30% after the men drank one liter of cola every day compared to control groups. The oxidant and additives of carbonated beverages result in protein oxidation, cell damages, and reduce sperm motility. So again, take the results of this study with a grain of salt because when you look at fertility parameters, carbonated beverages are certainly deleterious. And what I find strange is that when this study is performed on female mice, overall fertility parameters goes down, right? Ovarian weight goes down, development of follicles and oocytes are inhibited. Pepsi-Cola and Coca-Cola can reduce pregnancy rate and the overall reproductive cycle of female mice. But when you look at how uh, Coca-Cola and Pepsi-Cola affect the fertility parameters and serum concentrations of male mice, testosterone secretion goes up. Epidermal growth factor goes up testicular weight goes up. And this is actually in agreement with a previous study performed on rabbits, which showed similar results. So maybe Pepsi-Cola and Coca-Cola is deleterious for females, but highly beneficial for men. So maybe going forward, only men should be able to consume Pepsi-Cola or Coca-Cola, and it should be banned for females because it's clearly deleterious for their health, or at least in this case, in female mice. Now, what the hell is going on, right? Why is Chinese Coca-Cola or Pepsi-Cola so good for testosterone concentrations and androgen receptor content of the testicles, making them super, super big? Maybe Chinese Pepsi-Cola and Coca-Cola actually contains ashwagandha root extract or Fedosia agrestis or Tonkat Ali. Keep in mind that cola syrups are produced in a select few manufacturing plants all over the world. And then this syrup is shipped to bottling plants where water is added and carbonation is added because otherwise right if they do all of this manufacturing in a single spot the weight of the final product is so heavy that the distribution costs go up sky high so maybe there's something off with their manufacturing i do know having traveled all over the world that coca-cola or pepsi-cola tastes a little bit different from country to country because again the manufacturing is different and the overall bottling adding the water and the carbonation is different it's the same for uh, Starbucks, for example. I feel that the Starbucks here in Thailand tastes significantly better compared to the Starbucks in America. Same with McDonald's or all of the other franchises. Wherever you go in the world, it would taste a little bit different from country to country. I couldn't find a manufacturing plant for Pepsi-Cola, but I did find that for Coca-Cola, so I'll put that on the screen right now. You see that there's a select locations where uh, Coca-Cola is manufactured, or at least the syrup. And then that's distributed to the various bottling locations where they add water and carbonation. So what is going on in the middle of China that this Coca-Cola and perhaps Pepsi-Cola is able to raise testosterone concentrations? Maybe it's the same manufacturing site where they produce Fedosia Agrestis or Tonkat Ali. I don't know. You guys don't know. Nobody in China knows. Still, this study was very, very interesting. I don't feel that it's a reason to start megadosing the Coca-Cola or Pepsi-Cola or a combination thereof to get all of the beneficial effects of these carbonated beverages. I just wanted to highlight this because 
Well, if you purely go by the scientific evidence, you can make a case for these drinks. But, you know, if you start poking holes into this and really start looking at the metadata and understand that carbonated beverages, when they contain a lot of um, high fructose corn syrup, are deleterious for overall health, it's certainly not the way to go. All right, I found this very interesting. I hope you found it interesting too. I still prefer HCG or actual testosterone replacement therapy to increase my overall testosterone concentrations. And I'm sure you guys feel the exact same way. Vigorous crew, you guys know what to do. A front of a bicep for you guys, full with Pepsi Cola and Coca Cola, carbonated cannons. You can find all of the sponsors and affiliates that I'm associated with down below in the YouTube description section or go over to my website, vigorousteve.com. You can find a couple more there. If you're looking for personalized advice, I'm always available for consultations or personalized advice by email. Head over to my website and contact me there. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Vigor Steve. 